everybody, it's Robin from Southern California, and today I'm in an echoey room. I'm in the room that Gary is still working and setting up as our garden, so it is going to sound odd. I'm only working with one camera, usually I use two, but this is kind of like just something I need to do, and I thought I would just turn the camera on. This is the tomato plant that Gary brought in. I did a video on making the chair, and he can wheel it around the room. This is open right now, so it's getting fresh air. We're going to be really cold later in the week, but he wanted the tomato plant to get fresh air. Well, since he's brought it in, it has gotten really big. The problem is, it's going to fall over. So I need to do something, and I'm going to figure out how I'm going to do it. If I don't get this tomato state, what's going to happen is it will, it will start to break. It will break. So I need to get some stakes in here. Now I knew this wasn't going to work. It's not going to hold. So there's two different ways of doing it. He's not lifting this off. So let's get my soldering iron. My other soldering iron is somewhere else. So I bought a new one, a dollar. <laughs> but again, you know, you can't always find them for a dollar. And I'm going to plug this thing in, and fire it up, and figure out how I want to do this. And I'll show you how you can get stakes in one of these tubs really good. I just need to figure out what plugs are alive and where I can set them. I'm all on the other side of the room. Let me see if it's getting warm. Okay, we have a live outlet here. That's what I wanted to see. We're in the room right now. I'm probably going to use pipe cleaner because I, have, I don't use it outside and I've got it. So, the reason I don't use pipe cleaner outside, it's very simple, it deteriorates in the sun almost immediately. So I don't know how good or bad it's going to be in here, but I want to get this going and I'm going to figure out which way will be better for the stakes. I've done this different ways. I've actually stuck them in the corner, put holes in the container, and wired it up. If I do that, let me see, it will be leaned out, which is fine, because I can wire it, and then it won't go anywhere. It will literally be secure. You know what? I think I am going to do that. The other way is you make a hole. I don't know if you can see this. You can make a hole in the side here and stick it in this way. And then make it big enough for your see it's very easy to make holes you would make it big enough to put a pole in and then you could tie it to the outside if you want I did mine on the inside but either way will work either way will work I don't know if you're gonna be able to see what I'm gonna do I definitely have to do something because this tomato has gotten so big it is one tomato plant this one is a separate plant and I'll stake that up differently this one kind of Wow, went all over the place. Turned into a really big plant. The tomatoes in the house here are growing so big. So I'm going to have to get a lot of the brown off. And you know what? I'm going to tell you something. Do I have scissors? Even in the house, when I cut these off, they go right back in. It doesn't matter if it's inside or outside. Basically, I'm still composting in place in the house. Now I can smell my soldering iron is getting warm, which is good. And I think I'm going to make two holes there. Let's see how far I'm going to do this. And yeah, we're going to need something over here too. So I'll put a stake here. Let's see. My last ones, I've got them all over the garden. I've got to go get them. I have to wait until spring and get some more. Or hunt in the garden for the rest of them I'm not using. Okay, if I do one in each corner, then I can use yarn and I can just kind of wire it around, wire it, wrap it around with yarn. And why do I like yarn? Yarn is made for clothing when you get a good yarn and it really doesn't break down that quick. Where string, a lot of other things will. And being that this is just going to be in here, for a short time, I think we're going to go with yarn. All right, let's see if we can get some holes made here. Got a 
all there. Yep. And get a hole here. And see, it's unplugged. That's what I was saying. If you have to do this outside, it will last for quite a while. It's plastic. And normally it is melting solder. And the plastic, it's quick. Okay, I think one hole will be enough. The other way would be to make a hole here and slide it here and then keep the pole on the outside. We're going to do this differently. Hopefully I don't need that anymore. I'm going to leave it unplugged. I'm going to use, yeah, three colors. Last year's Christmas discount. I think I'm going to go with red. So you could use pipe cleaner or zip ties once you make the holes. See, this is going to be sturdy enough for a tomato. Now we're going to do all four sides. But there's so many different ways of doing this. It's whatever way you want to do it. That's the main thing. Everybody does it their own way. Everybody feels their way is better. Okay, see now you can see it and I can take it down. So I'll use red because I can spot it right away from the side. Cut it off. Yeah, I've been looking at it for a couple days. Gary said he didn't have time to do it. And he's got his, I forgot what those trees are called. He's got some guamachills here. And he's got some different, he bought those seeds from Hawaii. Where's the hole? There's the hole. Okay, look how quick that is. That's what's so nice about plastic containers. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. You just make the holes. The holes aren't going to hurt anything, even if you didn't want the holes there. I just hope I don't break it because, truthfully, this should have been staked up a while ago. A couple different ways we could do this. We could put a stake across here. I'm going to take this out. How simple that is to take out. See, I buy a small one. I don't have any more small stakes. I could have done it that way. Okay. Now. I guess we're going to be growing these tomatoes indoors. This is coming from all the way over there. When you wait this long, you've got to be so careful because watch me break it. They do break easy. This is coming from on this side, which should have been staked over there, but it's just so thick, the trunk. Um, I'm going to use yarn. I am going to use yarn. Put the yarn in my pocket. And I'm just going to tie it with yarn. I'm going to tie this one. I'm going to make sure I don't have a whole bunch all over the place. And I am going to tie this up here. That will still give it support. It's not like I have to tie it really tight or anything because all it needs is support with the sunlight out the window and make it a little loose. That's what I do. It will direct itself up. So sometimes when you have to twist the plant, you go, oh, how's it going to grow, it will grow. And now I'm going to make it tight around the pole, but not around the plant. So this way it's really tight and it's not going to slip, but it's not tight on the plant itself. Because I wrapped it now, I knotted it around the plant loosely, and now I'm wrapping it tight on the pole, but it's the plant is still loose. So it can breathe, it can get thicker. Okay. We have some leaves should just come off. Put the leaves back in. I take that all off. Get it out of the way. Now, okay, so we have a big tomato. That's one thing we won't get here is tomato hornworms. Not in the house. We get those in the house. We got big problems. All right. This technically should have been staked on that side. It's coming from there, but it's too late. So let's just go ahead and tie it as long as it's not drooping over the container. 
I mean, normally, yes, if you're laying on the ground outside, if you don't stake it in, that's fine too. But in the house, hanging over the container, you walk into it and something that can happen to it. So we're going to bring it through here. That's about the best I think we can do here. And again, I'm going to tie it loosely on the plant. You know what I might do first? Wait, wait, wait. I might do it differently first. Should have done the other one that way. Let's tie it first really tight on the pole. The poles, the tomato sticks have ridges, so that's what keeps it from slipping because it's not, see, it's not going to go anywhere. Now, I'm going to wrap it around the plant and that will hold the plant right there. And I don't have to do it too tight. All I'm doing is directing the tomato plant, just directing it, saying, hey, I want you to stay up not hang on the side. I walked in here, I was hanging on the side. And Okay, so we've got that up now. Now let's see what we have here. We have a real mess. We have walking onion. Let's get the walking onion going this way. Put that back. Oh, look how beautiful. This piece has to go up. Okay, that's a different onion. I mean, that is a different tomato, but I'm going to have this tomato go up this way. Same thing. Now at least it will be growing up. It may not be perfect. Had we staked it when it was still outside, it would have been better. But you know what? You can't go backwards. So the way it is, you didn't get staked when it should have. I'm going to do a surgeon's knot, which is wrapping it around three times. Okay, it's not going to go anywhere. And I can wrap a little bit around this leaf. It's just a leaf. So if it loses its leaf, it loses its leaf, but it's not going to hurt the stem. Sometimes I do wrap them tight with the leaf. And if the leaf chokes out, it chokes out. But at least by then, the plant has been directed in the direction I want. Okay, now I'm going to wrap this back tightly around the pole, and the plant is directed upwards. Okay, I think I'm almost done, actually. Now, these plastic containers, you can just set them up any way you want. So I've got walking on I've got a little tomato plant growing here. Not much, but a little one. It's a different variety and it's not doing quite as well as the other one. But we're going to just trim off all the brown leaves or yellow leaves. And if that one makes it, it makes it, I'm not even going to stake that one. Hmm. This is what I was saying here. If I wanted to, I could just stake this whole thing around. This is already going up, so I don't have to worry too much. I just don't want it to fall on the ground. Because when they droop down like that, you'll walk by and you'll snap it. Again, a surgeon's knot, it's just got an extra loop. And it just it tightens right away, so when you do the second one, it's already tight. All right, so see, I can just do this. Let me cut it off. I'm going to cut this. I did enough. I should put everything in my spot. I don't know where it is. All right. Now, even if it starts to droop, it can't really go that far. The watermelon is throwing new flowers. I don't think it's going to grow in the house. Watermelon is really a heat-loving plant. Some of these other plants, like tomato plants, are really forgiving on temperature. And I think that's why you can grow tomato plants sometimes in the house. I gave a friend of mine a tomato plant last year, and he said he grew it in the house and had tomatoes. In his living room, with all his house plants, he didn't eat it. He doesn't eat vegetables. We won't go there. <laughs> so I'm just going to bring this around. It will kind of hold everything in place. And it will just make sure that everything stays put. Yeah, the plastic containers, you can make holes in them and stick the stakes anywhere you want. I am crazy about the plastic containers. So that's it. Now the plant will not be able to just take off and go anywhere it wants. It's going to be kind of in a cage with some yarn. Now the tomato plant cannot go, well it can't go out, but it can go up. I think I'm just going to tie it over here now and that's it. Going around enough. Okay, so now I don't have to worry about the tomato plant going on the ground. Because I know here it's going to get bumped and he wheels it around sometimes. That's it. I could trim off the excess if I wanted to, the extra threads. I just want to take off 
anything it doesn't need. It's got some leaves that are definitely brown. It doesn't need those. I'll just shove them in on the side. They'll disappear. The tomatoes on this are huge. Isn't that cool? Okay, now he won't have to worry about the tomato plant. He can move it anywhere he wants. He can spin it. And if I need to, I can go up. Now, if I had my pom-poms, I would have had a glue gun and glued pom-poms on here. Why do I put pom-poms? I worry that if you can't see it, but here I don't think we'll have a problem. You poke your eye and you would say, why would you think that? Because my dad did that when I was a kid. We were working on a racing car set that my mother had won at a grocery store. And it needed a weight. And when it went around the corners, it was flying off. So my dad said, oh, we just need a weight. So he ran out in the dark, in the middle of the night, well, middle of the night, probably was about 10 o'clock at night, to go get a pipe he had that was made out of lead so he could cut it. And, and he wanted to cut off a little piece of lead off of it. Well, he went to look for it, and in the dark, he didn't see it, and he bent down, and he cut open his eyebrow, not his eye, and he came in. I remember he was washing it in the kitchen and washing. My mother went in the room and said, what's going on? And he said, nothing, nothing. And then she started screaming, and then he said, go get the keys. He said, just drive me to the hospital. Very calmly. He was very calm. But then he's a World War II Navy vet. Very calmly, I remember, I was went into the kitchen. He said, just drive me to the hospital. I need to get a couple stitches right now. Back then, you went to the hospital. You went in. They took care of you. went out. Now you went to the hospital here in this area, and you could be there for 12 hours. And she was screaming. Oh, my mother. Screaming and screaming. And I remember he grabbed a towel. He threw it on his face. And he held it with one hand and he drove himself to the hospital with my mother sitting in the front seat, screaming all the way. <laughs> so he came home, I remember that night, and he finished my set, my racing car set. He weighed down the car and he, I, I was really upset. He goes, oh, I'm fine, I just need a couple stitches. I, he was very calm. He said, I knew, he said as soon as he took a look at it, that he wasn't going to be able to stop it in the position it was, and he needed stitches, and I think he got three stitches. So he came home with his stitches, finished my race car, and that's why I always put something on the poles, because in the dark, he didn't see it, he knew where he put it, and when he reached for it, he cut it right on his eyebrow, and right where you've got your bone on the eyebrow, he just cut it. So that's why I put stuff on my stakes, because of that, I kind of learned from him. I usually learn from other people's mistakes. At least I try to, hopefully before I have a mistake. Now with this, these are going to start getting tall real quick. So I can even bring another piece of yarn across that way. And when this gets taller, I can continue staking it up, which I think it's going to be really soon because I'm looking how long these... This was a small plant when he brought this in. Wow. Okay, well, that's it. I'm done. Isn't that cool? It's now all up. I got all the uh, brown leaves off, took off some of the old yarn that was in there, and this is all being held up quite nicely. It's being held in, the stakes are being held into the plastic, and we'll see. I don't think any watermelon's going to come out of this, but he wants to try. I wouldn't try it. For indoor, personally, me, I would go with onions. I would try some greens. Another piece I can take out of yarn. Look at this. The yarn's been in there all summer with other plants, and it's still good. That's why I like yarn. I like masking tape, but I don't like pipe cleaner, not in yarn. But uh, I would go with greens, and especially walking onions, because that's that just will grow anywhere. Tomatoes, they'll, they will do fine with the window sun. You don't even need grow lights. I just can't believe how big the tomatoes are huge on here. I've got one on my deck, and the tomatoes are small. I've got another one in the yard, and with the cold weather, it's not looking that good. The deck one's looking better than the other one. I am done. Guamachal. He's got, that's why I said guamachal and ice cream bean. That's what that tree is he's growing there. He's got two or three of them. They're called ice cream bean. He bought the seeds from somebody in Hawaii, and he's quite happy with them. He hopes to get them out in the garden this spring. I think he meant to do it this past spring, but he didn't get to it, which is fine. You'll be fine in his room. He's still working. 
He got some mirrors up today, he told me while I was gone. He found a chair in the trash. So he was really excited with that because it's got casters and it's comfortable. He said he can sit in here and do stuff. And then he found some plastic. They were supposed to have drawers. There were no drawers also on casters and he can wheel them around. So he found some stuff in the trash that he can actually use in his room. When you're trimming your plant and you've got, let's say, tomato plants, but the leaves look really beautiful. You had a couple leaves that are brown. You don't have to take the whole leaf off. Remember, the plant does need its leaves. It doesn't need all its leaves. But you can always trim half the leaf or part of the leaf. You don't have to trim the whole leaf. Like this one's brown. I could just do a piece of the leaf and then just drop it in there. It will disappear. So I think I'm good to go, and I think this is fine. And we'll see how this goes. I didn't really wrap that, but I can add in more as it goes up. I'm not sure which way he had it turned. He loves his chairs because you can really just turn the chair towards the sun in here. And you can change it around too for the plant. I'm looking to see if anything else should be trimmed. Otherwise the rest of the leaves are beautiful. Just beautiful. This is just a room. Nothing fancy. No grow lights of any type. Just a room he's setting up. A spare room. And he painted it white and put these mirrors that he found in the trash and other mirrors around to bring more light in. So even though this is the only window, really, there is another window there, but this is the window bringing in all the light. The whole room is going to light up because of the mirrors. All right, so I think we're good. You watch me now stake up a, a plant. So remember when you're putting stakes in one of these, if you, need, you can do it either way. You can make holes in the container, stick the stake inside the soil in there, and then attach it. You could put multiple holes. I just put two, but if you were dealing with something heavier, you could put two more holes in there and tie it on. Or you can make the hole on the top, on the lip, and put it in, but it would be on the outside. That would be the only difference. It would then be on the outside, and it would work too if I had longer stakes. That would be fine, because that will go all the way down. In the ground, you can really, if you have the container sitting on the ground, you could really put the big stakes in there. And I have done that too. So we're done. This plant looks really good, happy and healthy. We got tomatoes and flowers coming everywhere. And I think we're gonna have tomatoes on this plant all year. Okay, well, I'm done here. Okay, have a great day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.